Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, uh, back bringing you our, uh, my version of the terrible podcast with Dave Bryan still away. Uh, if you haven't heard, we'll bring back the regular terrible podcast on Friday, uh, hopefully at least, uh, barring anything unforeseen. And so we'll get back and talk about how nothing has happened in the last week since we did the last podcast. Um, hopefully the audio for this video is better uh, than the last one. I forgot to check my settings before I did the uh, Friday video, the uh, mini rant I had about focusing too much on New England. If you missed that video, I will put a link on the post on SteelersDepot.com, and you can check it out there. Let me know what you guys think, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to get uh, first updates, first alerts uh, whenever I do these kinds of videos. Um, so again, hopefully the audio is better. Uh, the quick aside to that, my software it always updates my uh, it always updates the software, so my audio settings always change, and I have to go back and play around with them and remember what I did to uh, make it better, so you don't get that distorted, um, you know, overbodied uh, audio sound that we've had uh, before. So I think this is better. Hopefully it is. Let me know if you do have an issue with the audio or the video for that matter, and uh, we'll certainly do what we can to to correct it. But to today, and what I wanted to talk about is just some football 101. So, fair warning, if you're a football junkie and you know some of the more technical stuff, uh, this video might not be for you, but there's a lot of casual fans out there and just some people that would like a refresher. Um, these are things that I'll go back and look at during the offseason just to kind of, you know, sharpen myself and remind myself of some of these things of, of what they are and, and, and more importantly, I guess, how to explain them. So we're going to look at defensive line play today and just different techniques and, and what a you know zero tech is, what a five tech is. I believe I had one person ask me to, to go over some of this stuff. So uh, I thought it was a good option and something a little on the lighter side, but, you know, definitely has some value and some information too. Um, cause I didn't really know what else I wanted to talk about. We have, uh, up on Steelers Depot today, a film room on William Gay in the slot corner position. So I figured I'd do a little different direction and instead of focusing on just one player, I'll focus on a, a scheme, I guess, but more of just, you know, alignment and positioning because this is not, uh, for one team or one coach. This is just going to be terms you'll see across the board. You see it a lot during the NFL draft. Um, obviously we're past that, but you know, whenever we get into the season and we start doing our, our film sessions sessions, and we get into some pretty serious X's and O's, um, it's good to have this background information. So if you weren't sure before, now you know what the heck we're talking about. And then you can focus on the actual application and the plays and not trying to figure out, wait, what's the one tech? Who's the five tech? What does that mean? So I just pulled up a random game. We're in week 17 against Cleveland. And I just literally went to the first drive because it kind of shows it all. Um, of some of the different, you know, personnel groupings, the different techniques, uh, and where these guys line up. So, uh, not going to be a super long video, I don't think. Um, and again, if you're a big football junkie, might not be the most interesting thing for you. But if you want the refresher, or if you don't know, which is totally cool, uh, this video hopefully will help you out. So the first play here is first and ten for Cleveland. Uh, this is going to be the Steelers base three four, and obviously, I'm, I'm well aware that. Base is, is not really the accurate term anymore because the Steelers run their nickel, which we'll get to in a second, about 70-75% of the time. Or really, I should say they're in sub-package, meaning, you know, something other than base or goal line, um, you know, three-quarters of the time. And that's because the NFL has moved so much to a passing league and 11 personnel, which are three wide receiver sets. But for this play, whenever you get, you know, a 21 personnel like you have here, uh, two running backs, fullback, and a running back, and there's a tight end. Um, Steelers are going to be in their base defense much more often uh, than not, basically, almost every time. So, you know, we'll start inside out with our nose tackle, Javon Hargrave. And he's, you know, I'd call that basically a zero tech. There's a slight shade uh, over the center here. Um, usually you might see a little bit more pronounced of a shade to really call that a one tech. But zero tech is going to be the nose tackle line head up. Uh, on the center, right over his helmet. If he's going to be a one tech, he's going to be shaded more to a shoulder in the you know the, the strong side or the weak side, typically the strong side shoulder. Um, moving to our right here, I believe that is Ricardo Matthews. He's going to be the five tech. He's going to be on the outside shoulder of the uh, left tackle. So you know that's when you think three four and you think about the history of it and what the Steelers have, have done a lot. In the past, at least, you know, that's kind of going to be your traditional alignment, a zero tech and a five tech. 
to the strong side of the play, uh, we get, uh, who is that? Is that LT Walton? Or is that to it? We'll run it through. I want to make sure I just have the name right. That is LT Walton. Um, he's not going to be in the five tech here. Uh, what you actually see more often in the Steelers base today is uh, either a head up alignment or an inside shade. So you could call that a four tech. I'd probably call that a four eye because there's a slight inside shade here. So honestly, you don't see you know these defensive ends, even in a base three four, play as the five too often anymore. Occasionally, obviously there's an example here, but more often than not, they're going to be lying head up or even more often an inside shade. So I call that uh, a four eye. So your four eye, your five tech, and your nose tackle head up with your two outside linebackers, of course, Jarvis Jones on the right side, Bud Dupree on the left, and then you have the linebackers uh, filling in over the guards, which uh, are not covered up in the Steelers, you know, down linemen. And uh, these are the bubbles here for the offense, you know, where, the, where some of these runs might hit with, you know, these guards are uncovered covered and moving free. So I run the play through. We're not really focusing on the play at all here. Uh, Dupree ends up dropping uh, passes incomplete down the sideline. But uh, so I'll pause it real quick if you want to look at it and just kind of go over it again. Uh, your zero tech, your five tech, your four eye, your two outside linebackers, uh, inside linebackers filling in. This is the Mac linebacker, the weak side linebacker. This is the Buck linebacker, the strong side linebacker. And then Sean Davis walking down into the box to be the eighth guy, which again, against 21 personnel, heavy run looks first and 10 as well. Pretty uh, common thing to do. And then he's going to end up covering uh, the Y, the tight end. Go to the next play. It's a false start mixed in here as well, I believe. Uh, something that we've talked about a lot, written about a lot. I just did an article last week about a Keith Butler basically confirming that you're going to continue to see this um, in 2017. And this is him kind of his own stamp. Something that uh, I don't think LeBeau really ever did was this over front that basically looks and functions like a 4-3 defense. Um, in this case, and they, they've run it in a couple different ways, but in this case you have uh, Trevon Hargrave, who's your usual nose tackle, lined up you know, in that one tech position. You see that you know, in between uh, the A gap between center and guard, um, and he's going to be turned, that tilted nose, which really came about with Steelers in the 70s and Joe Green. Um, it was a defensive line coach whose name escapes me, but he was the first guy that at least as history tells it to kind of turn the nose tackle and, and Joe Green was so explosive that if they tilted him and put him between the center and the guard, it was almost impossible for either of those guys to reach Joe Green and he would just get into the backfield and penetrate, you know, so often because he was in a gap and he was tilted as well and he would just fire up the A gap. So we see Hargrave here um, in that same role. Now over here, we get this over front to the strong side of the formation, which is going to be uh, LT Walton basically playing in the in the B gap, and he's going to be turned as well. And then we get our real wide end here. This is Ricardo Matthews uh, on the outside shade uh, of the tight end. So, you know, this is one of the, the wrinkles they use against tight end heavy teams, uh, 12 personnel, 13 personnel, especially. I think about the Dallas game last year. Uh, this was used, or at least some similar stuff to it uh, was used. Dallas was a, a different wrinkle, um, which we won't get into today. Um, San Francisco in 2015 was the first time the Butler used this. That was week two. They ran it 17 times because the 49ers were a very tight end heavy team. Um, so it's something that they will use. And uh, as Butler said, and our numbers kind of back it up, it, it was a pretty successful uh, formation. So that's the down uh, lineman. And then we get to the strong side. Bud Dupree is going to play off ball linebacker with his defensive end basically in where the outside linebacker usually would be on the outside shoulder of the tight end. So no need for Bud Dupree to be there. So he's going to move off ball two linebackers and then your uh, right outside linebacker, your weak side outside linebacker is going to you know basically play his uh, normal alignment at least. So I can run this through for you guys. But this is what I, you know, I'll, I'll call it the over front. You can call it, you know, whatever you want to. I've called it different things before. But really, it's just the over front against uh, these heavy tight ends. So we have uh, two tight ends here. Um, so I'm not sure what the whole personnel grouping is. Maybe uh, 12 personnel. And uh, Game Pass is freezing up on me. But you get the idea of the concept. Um, we've written about it a lot. We'll continue to write about it, uh, definitely, and talk about it 
because um, you're going to see it more in 2017. Uh, there's no doubt about that, or at the very least, uh, just as often. So finally, uh, we get a third down here for Cleveland, and uh, the Steelers are going to be in their nickel defense, which, again, you're going to see the majority of the time. I'm pretty sure 95% of Steelers fans now understand and realize that nickel defense is going to be the predominant package uh, for Pittsburgh, and for, I think, the vast majority, if not all, of defenses across the board. It's a passing league, like I said earlier. So, nickel defense, what that means is the nose tackle gets removed. You don't have Hargrave here, or at least uh, you might actually, because of the injuries, you do have Hargrave here. But you have two down linemen instead of the three. So, you know, the quote-unquote nose tackle gets removed. In this case, Hargrave just becomes the uh, other defensive end, and they're going to play inside. So... Most often, you're going to get a three-tech and a one-tech, which, again, the one-tech is going to be shaded over center in the A-gap, and the three-tech is going to be shaded over guard in the B-gap. It's a little different here. Um, I guess, really, no one's playing a true one-tech. Here's Hargrave playing the three outside shoulder of the guard. Um, you get basically head up on the guard here as well for LT Walton. I think it might be part of some of the blitz things that they're doing. Um, you get a blitz here where... Uh, Hargrave and Walton both scoop down a gap as the blitz from the buck linebacker Lawrence Timmons tries to come through and replace. Uh, obviously, doesn't get home on the screen. But this is nickel defense, so it's going to be a two down front. So two four five, two down linemen, still your four linebackers, and then there's William Gay coming in as your nickel corner. I think that's pretty uh, intuitive and pretty known for most fans, but not everybody does, and that's totally fine. Uh, there's a, a funny video that uh, Zach Dunn on Twitter had, had reposted from, I'm not sure where the original source was, but it's a story Brett Favre was telling, and I think it was Favre's second or maybe even third year in the NFL, and he uh, went up to one of his quarterbacks, uh, one of the Detmers, I forget which one it was, Ty Detmer maybe, and uh, after uh, a meeting or a, you know, a session where the coach was, uh, head coach was talking about, you know, watch out for their nickel defense and, you know, always talking about nickel defenses. And Favre goes up to Detmer and says, hey, what's a nickel defense? And so Detmer has to explain it to him. And Favre goes, oh, that's it. That's, that's fine. Uh, but it's funny, you know, Brett Favre, uh, one of the best quarterbacks in his era for at least it was his second year, didn't know what a nickel defense was. Couldn't explain it to you. So, you know, we can't assume that everybody knows it, and it's okay if you don't. We're all here to learn. We're all here to get a little bit better. But that's nickel defense, two, four, five. Um, you're going to get a one tech, a three tech most often. And so, you know, when I hear about a guy like Tyson Alulu that, you know, he might be able to play the one, maybe they do use him as a backup nose tackle. I can't say I'm not in their head right now. We haven't seen him get any reps in OTAs, obviously because of the calf injury. But when I hear about him playing the one, I, I start to think about him playing the one tech in nickel situations where he's going to be a pass rusher still. And he's not going to be playing a true 3-4 base, uh, zero or one tech, but we'll see what happens with that. But there, there you go. So you have your 3-4, there's an overfront in that 3-4, and uh, nickel. And that's your most common alignments. I mean, dime's not going to change the front uh, too often, you're going to lose an inside linebacker here, uh, but it's not going to change. You know, you're still going to usually have your one tech and your three tech. Then there's goal line, of course, which uh, brings an extra defense alignment. But I showed you what the Steelers are going to, you know, run in their front seven, at least in terms of alignment, uh, the vast majority of the time. Their base 3 4, that 4 3 over, that 3 4 over, whatever you want to call it, that we saw in the second uh, play we showed. And then their nickel defense, which you're going to see the majority of the time. So hopefully this video was informative for some of you guys who weren't uh, entirely sure on what some of these concepts was and what some of these techniques were. If I didn't do a good job explaining something, uh, please let me know and I will try to answer it in the comments, either on YouTube or on Steelers Depot. If there's any other football 101 uh, you know, concept that you want me to talk about and break down something that you're not sure of, again, please let me know in the comments section below, whether that you're watching on YouTube or on Steelers Depot or however you're watching and let me know and we can address that uh, you know throughout uh, the summer we can do a weekly summer series uh, of some football 101 talk I've done that in the past in articles but seeing it on video can be a little more helpful I think as well whenever we're able to talk uh, together and, and work through it so let me know what you guys think uh, be sure to stick with Steelers Depot throughout the week and throughout the rest of the offseason and uh, camp's not too far away super excited for that going over to Latrobe, and, you know, we'll be there every day, uh, again, barring anything unforeseen, and have our, our usual practice reports and podcasts and all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.